Penny and higher, chapter 7, polynomials, mixed exercise 7k at the end, question 2 this time, there's 3 bits, so it'll be a wee bit long. And what it says is, for each of these functions, and there's going to be 3 of them, find d, the constant at the end, and the zeros of the function. Well, strictly speaking, they should be saying that's the graph of the function, but ignoring that part, they want the zeros, that is, where the graph cuts the x-axis. And it tells you one. For the first one, it says, this one cuts the x-axis at 2, 0. So there's one of the zeros of the graph. Right, well, straight away what I'll do is put down my synthetic division with these coefficients, 2, negative 5, 1, and d. I know that 2 is a root, so that x minus 2 is a factor, the remainder should come to 0. So what we've got, just working it through, 2, multiply it up, 4. Add it down, negative 1, multiply it up, negative 2. Add it down, negative 1, again, multiply it up, negative 2, add it down, and I've got d minus 2. Now, I know that the remainder should equal 0. I'm not going to make a statement in this case. If it was a higher question, I would. d minus 2 equals 0, in which case d should equal 2. So that the first part. That means that d equals 2. And then the second part said, find the zeros. Well, you're going to get the zeros. I'll put this down. You've got the zeros means that y should equal 0. That means that 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus x plus 2 should equal 0. And I've already got it worked out here. I've already got x minus 2 is one of the factors, and that the quotient, the remaining factor, will be 2x squared minus x minus 1, which I can then just factorise myself. So given that it does factorise, that must be 2x times x, that must be 1 times 1, the negative must go to the larger, and that must be the opposite. So that means I've got either x equals, and I'll pick out the smallest one first, negative a half, or 1 or 2 for the values of x. But the question said, find the other zeros. Well, that means that the other zeros oh, must be at negative a half zero and one zero. There. There's the other two zeros. And so part B, another one here then, only this time you've got negative four is going to be a root since that's a zero of the graph. So synthetic division. Now what have we got? We've got 2, 1, negative 25, and d, and negative 4 should work. So down, 2, multiplying it up, negative 8. Adding it down, negative 7. Multiplying it up, positive 28. Adding it down, a positive 3. Ooh. Multiplying it up, negative 12. Adding it down, d minus 12. And then without writing the statements, I know that if that's a root, that should be 0. If I'm dividing by x plus 4, the remainder should be 0. So d minus 12 should be 0, which means d is 12. I'll put that over here. That means that d minus 12 should equal 0, which means that d equals 12. That was the first bit. What's the value of d? And the second bit is, what are the other zeros? Well, the zeros mean that y should be 0, which means that 2x cubed plus x squared minus 25x plus 12 should equal 0. And I've already got all the factorisation there in that synthetic division. I've got x plus 4 was one of the factors, and the quotient gives the remaining factor, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. So it's just a case of factorising that quadratic myself. Given that it factorises, by the implication of the question, it must be 2x times x, it must be 1 times the 3, and that would be a 6, so it must be the 1 and the 3. The negative must go to the bigger, but that says they're both negative. And then finally, that means that x is going to be, <coughs> putting them in order, negative 4, then a half, then 3. So that would be the first part, but to state the zeros formally, rather than just the roots, so that means the other zeros are, now I've got the negative 4 already, so it must be a half 0 and 3 0 for the other two points where this graph cuts the x axis. And so part C. Right, this time d 
D slightly further in, so when I do my synthetic division I'll have to pick up that D and carry it along for a little while. Well, synthetic division, my coefficients are what? 3, negative 8, negative D, leave a bit of a bigger space here, negative 10. And I know that 5 works, so add it down, multiply it up, add it down, multiply it up. Add it down, 35 minus d, multiply up 15, 175 minus 5d, add it down, 165 minus 5d. Then I know, since 5 is a root, x minus 5 is a factor, that should come to 0, so I'll just make that statement just now. If it had been a higher question, perhaps I'd have made a statement about that being the remainder on division, etc which means that 5d is 165, so d is going to be 33. Yeah, that's d done. Now there's two things I can do, so I can go back and fill that in. So I'm looking for the zeros then. So the zeros means that y should equal zero, which means that this expression, 3x cubed, minus 8x squared, minus, now we know it's 33x, minus 10, should equal zero. And I've already done the synthetic division. I need, don't need to do this again, just replacing that D with a 33, because I'm just replace that D with a 33. So it's going to be 35 minus 33, so that part's going to be 2. So this part here is going to be x minus 5 times, and the remaining part is 3x squared plus 7x plus 2 equals 0, which by the nature of the question must factorise so that must be 3x and x, and then that will be a 6 and a 1 to make the 7, and they're all positive, which gives me the answers. x equals 5, or negative a third, or negative 2. You have to put them in order. So I've got negative 2, negative 1 third, or 5. So the other zeros will be, we've got the 5 zero already, so it must be the negative 2 zero, and the negative one third zero. There, that at last is the answer to question two.